So in this video, we will be talking about uh, fatigue. Yeah, mm. uh, fatigue damage is uh, among the major issues in engineering uh, because uh, it increases with the number of applied uh, loading cycle in a uh, cumulative manner, and it can lead to uh, fracture and failure uh, of uh, the considered part. Yeah. Right, so we start our lesson with uh, some history regarding fatigue. Uh, beginning in the first half of the 19th century, uh, mechanical failure were observed to take place uh, in metal and materials subject to repetitive uh, stress well below the yield strength. Uh, so the theory came to be that the metal became a diet or fatigue. Uh, and hence we have the term uh, fatigue. Or uh, metal uh, fatigue, and among the key point uh, in understanding fatigue is that uh, it can be defined as a form of a failure that occurs in structure uh, subjected to dynamic and fluctuating uh, stress, and it can cause a path failure, and it is responsible for uh, almost ninety percent of mechanical engineering failure. Uh, it can occur suddenly and without warning, and uh, it can be brittle in nature, even uh, for ductile uh, material. And we have uh, a bridge here. So uh, here we have a bridge with a cars driving uh, over the bridge uh, repeatedly, and we know that the number of cars and the weight they apply on the bridge will uh, vary depending uh, on the amount of cars and also at any given time, yeah? So the key concept here uh, for fatigue materials, uh, we have a stress uh, versus a yield stress. Uh, it is important to remember that uh, parts can fail due to fatigue, even if the maximum uh, stress applied is much less than the material uh, yield stress, yeah? So uh, we have uh, the formula here, uh, F is forces, and we have uh, T at uh, the time here, and this indicates that any force uh, applied uh, over time uh, will cause uh, a crank growth, and this will eventually uh, leading to uh, premature failure. Yeah. And if we look at the graph here, we can see uh, a cyclic loading, uh, meaning that the repeated application of uh, forces as depicted here in the graph, will lead to uh, cyclic loading uh, on the bridge uh, structure. And over time, these cyclic forces can cause a small crack to uh, grow larger. And a continuous growth of these cracks can uh, result in a structural failure, uh, even before the expected uh, life span uh, of the bridge. Yeah. <clears throat> and uh, it is important for us to understand how forces acting on the bridge uh, over time can lead to uh, crack growth and eventful failure is vital for ensuring the safety and uh, longevity of a bridge structure. So what we need is that we need to have a proper design, uh, a good material selection and uh, maintenance practices that uh, we can say a key uh, factor to preventing uh, such a failure. So usually we start with uh, some kind of a crack uh, initiation. Uh, for example, in the figure here, we have uh, this tiny micro crack that can be due to the way the part was uh, fabricated or the way the material was uh, arranged and so on. And uh, in some point, we need the site for this uh, crack to grow. And as our load varies uh, over time, uh, that crack is going to get bigger. Uh, and uh, bigger with uh, each cycle. And eventually, uh, this will proceed to uh, brittle style uh, fracture. And this could even happen uh, even if that material is a ductile material. Yeah? So uh, something like aluminium uh, could suddenly fail with no warning. Uh, that is uh, typical uh, for ductile material. Uh, such as a lot of a deformation uh, that will happen uh, before failure. So we can state that 
uh, we can say that there are three stages uh, involved in fatigue failure. The first one is where the crack uh, formation will uh, occurs. And uh, we have a second stage is where the growth uh, of the crack will happen. It will become bigger and bigger with uh, each cycle. And the third one is when the fracture uh, occurs. Yeah. To summarize, uh, we can say that material fatigue is a phenomenon where the structure fail when subjected to a cyclic loading. And uh, this type of uh, structural damage, <clears throat> uh, it occurs even when the experience a stress range is far below the static material strength. Uh, fatigue is uh, one of the most common uh, source behind uh, failure of a mechanical uh, structure. The process until a component finally fails under repeated uh, loading can be divided uh, into uh, three stages. The first one is during uh, a large uh, number of cycle. Uh, the damage develops on the microscopic level and grows until a uh, microscopic crack is formed. And uh, the microscopic crack grows for uh, each cycle until it reach a critical lag. And uh, the crack component breaks because it can no longer sustain uh, the peak loading. And uh, it is good to know that for certain application, uh, the second stage uh, cannot be observed. A uh, microscopic crack instead grows uh, rapidly, uh, causing a sudden failure of the component. Uh, as you can see here, uh, the last two stages, uh, as you can see in the slide here, uh, are usually part of the fracture mechanics. Uh, and fatigue mainly refers to the first uh, stage. And there is some uh, overlap between uh, these uh, disciplines. Uh, the number of cycles to fatigue uh, often uh, includes uh, the last two uh, stages. Yeah, And uh, most of the components life, uh, as we know, uh, occurs before a uh, microscopic crack is uh, visible. And it is very important for uh, designers to uh, design uh, to aim to avoid encountering to encountering uh, such uh, damage. Yeah. And uh, here are some important uh, terminologies for a better understanding of uh, this chapter. So the first one we have uh, fatigue that we can define as the lowering of uh, strength or material or a failure of a material due to repetitive uh, stress, which may be above or below the yield uh, strength. Yeah, and we have a uh, creep that we can define as a time dependent uh, permanent deformation uh, at a high temperature that occur at a constant uh, loading or constant uh, stress. And also we have a S uh, and curve, uh, also known as a Waller curve. Yeah. So this uh, can be defined as a graph uh, showing uh, stress as a function of a number of cycle uh, in uh, fatigue. And uh, the S and curve allows us to calculate the number of cycle until uh, a component is likely uh, to fail. Uh, for a given uh, stress range, yeah? And also we have uh, a beach or a clamshell map uh, that is the pattern that, that uh, often seen on a component uh, subjected to uh, fatigue. Uh, like what we can see in the figure here, we have uh, this, uh, the origin of fracture, and we have uh, a beach mark uh, pattern. Uh, so this is what we call as a beach or clamshell map. And also we have... Uh, Rotating cantilever beam uh, testing. Uh, this uh, this is a, a technique that used for uh, fatigue testing. Uh, rotating beam fatigue testers are one of, of the oldest methods uh, used to determine uh, materials uh, fatigue behavior. So how does a fatigue failure looks like? Yeah, a fatigue failure is quite uh, easy to identify. Uh, as you can see in the figure here, uh, the fracture surface. Uh, particularly uh, near the origin, uh, is uh, typically uh, smooth. Uh, this fatigue crack uh, always uh, initiates at the surface at a stress concentration point, uh, such as a surface defect, uh, sharp surface uh, features, and so on. Yeah, and the surface becomes uh, 
rougher as the original crack increase in size and maybe fibrous during the final uh, crack uh, propagation. As you can see in the figure here, uh, we can see the fracture surface always has shows a distinctive a beach marks uh, as illustrated uh, in the figure, uh, indicative of a periodical crack uh, propagation uh, with a cyclic loading condition. And here we can see uh, an example of a schematic uh, representation of a fatigue fracture surface uh, of a steel uh, shaft. Uh, we can see that the fairly initiated at this point uh, at the uh, catastrophic uh, failure zone, uh, we can see we, we know that it is no longer supporting any loading. Yeah, so uh, there are several factors that uh, we need to know that can influ influence uh, fatigue uh, strength, including uh, the range of uh, stress and also the geometry of the component, uh, the material properties, and also environmental factors uh, such as a thermal and uh, corrosive uh, condition. I have uh, mentioned uh, previously uh, crack initiation uh, at the sites of uh, stress concentration, uh, such as uh, micro cracks, a scratch, indents, entry corners, uh, dislocation, so on. And that is the reason why uh, the quality of a surface is very important if you want to avoid uh, fatigue uh, from uh, propagating. Yeah. And uh, if you look at the figure here, I think we have discussed. Uh, the stage involved in crack propagation uh, many, many times in previous slide, right? So as you can see here, uh, this is the first stage that indicates a slow propagation along the crystal plane with a high resolve uh, shear stress. And this involves just a few grains and has a flat uh, fracture surface. And then we have a stage two that uh, involves a faster propagation uh, perpendicular to the applied Stress, and uh, we can see here the crack grows by a repetitive blunting uh, and sharpening process at crack tip. A uh, rough uh, fracture surface, uh, and crack will eventually reach a critical uh, dimension, and uh, it will uh, propagate uh, very rapidly. To summarize uh, what we have learned uh, so far. Uh, the majority of a component life span occurs before uh, any microscopic crack becomes uh, visible. Uh, in terms of a uh, design uh, priorities uh, in engineering and material science, uh, we try to design with a focus on preventing the initiation of uh, such damage to ensure the longevity of the component. And uh, in terms of a crack growth mechanism, uh, the crack grow progressively with uh, each loading cycle eventually leading to a component uh, failure. And uh, also we need to remember that uh, fatigue is a primary cause of a failure in mechanical component uh, responsible for approximately 90% of uh, such a failure. And uh, fatigue induced a failure often occurs suddenly and without warning, uh, even in materials that are otherwise uh, considered ductile. 